Outstanding. So, since all the Gothis that started this seem to believe that they have a complete and thorough understanding of left me high and dry on Sunday, November 14th, I will make merciless fun of their inability to, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> At any rate, what should we discuss? So, as we are discussing high-minded principles of this stuff, I had an interesting text today from a very dear friend of mine. I love her to death. She said, to what degree could we say that our words influence our circumstances and outcomes? And it brought into mind several discussions that I've been having recently. They've kind of come up fairly serendipitous that this, that this young lady is feeling the same thing, feeling the same kind of pressure. I, I, she follows a Hellenistic path instead of uh, or also true, but her, her growth and patterns of growth very much mirror much of what we ought to be doing and what we are doing in many cases. So to what degree do our words influence the world around us? I can't really tell you a degree and I can't really give you a number. What I can tell you is the pattern how to change it. So let's say you walk into a room. This is one of the things you need to be aware of. One of the things when I went through Camp McCall at uh, Fort Bragg, I remember distinctly listening to some of the operators of that time talk about being able to walk into a bar, or maybe no, it wasn't. I don't remember where I figured that how it's been 30 years, I guess. At any rate, to be able to take a snapshot of whatever surroundings you happen to be in and be aware of everything all at once. That awareness is kind of important. And we tend to we tend to operate much of our lives on autopilot. When people have a problem or a difficulty in life. It's because their autopilot is disrupted in some way, some fashion, some, something is out of whack. There's no congruence to their thoughts and the reality of what they're doing. How do we, how do we improve that? How do, we, how do we really take into account where your thoughts create your reality? Well, how the fuck does that work? Where does it say that in the lore? I mean, that doesn't make any, I mean, you know, you <clears throat> look in the Bible and the, he said, let there be light. And there was light. The shaping of life with regard to our lore is very much a shaping of it, of, of a molding of existing life patterns. And I wrote about it in, uh, it was either blind in one eye. I think it may have been blind in one eye, it went into the scientific ideas that supported much of our lore and hinted at how much they might really know. Back to the, how do the words affect the world around us, our world? How do they shape the outcomes of what's going on? So a simple practice to begin, in whatever situation you find yourself, when you walk into a room, we automatically have a series of thoughts that come to our mind, all of them conditioned by where we come from, how we grew up, what we know, what we don't know, uh, new things, unexplained things, different things that show up when you walk into a room. Um, I like that book. I don't like that picture. Uh, this carpet needs to be swept. Uh, there's dust on the ceiling fan. The dog needs to quit jumping on me. All, all kinds of things. We begin to shape up a thought process about, and we form a recognition with that home or an association with that, with that environment, negative or positive. And then we say things. Now, our thoughts being overwhelmingly negative, our words may start coming out. They may be a little more sharp than they need to be. Some smart ass comment. And I, you know, there's always somebody that's an absolute bitch that's going to say something shitty. <laughs> well, it just needed to be said. Well, it's true. Because it's true, I can just say the shittiest thing I want to. Because well, because it's true, and I'm, I'm brutally honest. Because that's just that that brutally honest thing. Let's be real clear about that. That is 
a way for people that are shitty to say whatever the fuck they want and be mean about things because, well, it's true, isn't it? You give a fuck if it's true. Keep your mouth shut. You ain't got something decent to say. Shit. Why people don't understand that, I'll never know. But they don't. And um, it's just what it is. Um. <laughs> so don't, don't listen to that nonsense. Put that in its place when you catch it. But in, in regards to ourselves, <clears throat> try to become aware of when you do that. So let's say you walk into a room and you have the same bunch of negative thoughts. I don't like this. I don't like that. And well, this is wrong and this should be better. And well, my, my, I'm a, my, my altar looks a little bit better, but me more neatly arranged and it's cluttered and it's dirty. And okay. Let's say you walk into a hoarder's house. It's got two or three dogs or dog shit. It's nasty, but they're heathen, right? They're proud also true. And it's a shithole. Fucking stinks like animal waste. It's very hard not to come up with a negative connotation. God damn, do these people ever take a fucking bath? They're not picking up a fucking dog turd. Fuck, quit living like the animals you have in your home. Those are not nice things to be thinking. <clears throat> Nor are they nice things to be saying. There's a way to say that. There's a way to guide and encourage and motivate and support and, and help people through those situations that they're in. It's exhausting sometimes, life is. And we have this default thing that, well, I'm going to be brutally honest and I can go ahead and pass judgment because, well, I'm, I, I don't do that, so I'm automatically, I'm better than. What the fuck you're not? The, 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 the energy that animates your shell, the energy that animates who you are, is no greater or lesser than the energy that animates this person over here, no matter how sick they may be mentally. It's no greater nor lesser. It's different, wrapped in a much different package. May not be congruent with the way you want to live. It's not any different. And you can't prove to me that it is by no way, shape, form, or fucking fashion. Who knows what it looks like? Eight ounces is what the people that Morg says, eight ounces. Eight ounces different in the weight of a living person from a dead person. I don't know what that's all about. That's what I heard. Instead of going in and thinking of the first things you don't like, how about you walk in there and automatically, when you catch yourself doing that, if you have the strength of mind to say, okay, I'm not going to do that, um, find 10 positive things. That person has pretty eyes. I like their kindness. That is a pretty dog. Um, I like what they've done with this place. What a neat collection. So imagine if you're dealing with someone and you start off every interaction by immediately finding five, six, seven, eight, ten positive things that you want to use to deal with that person. Now, we all know how much we can sit around and bitch about the economy, the shape of the world, fuck Joe Biden, um, various races, ethnic groups, we sit around and bitch about that all day long, and we'll get along just fine. We'll sit around and cuss and discuss, and we'll fix the world, and this will be all right. And some cinches, grab me a beer, would you? All right, good. <clears throat> so we got that out of the way. I know you, you know me, we all know what we don't like. We can sit around and just be bitter old men sitting here, you know, or crotchety old ladies and just sit around and, and just and just complain. Well, it's true, ain't it? But just because it's true, I can say it. <laughs> First off, nobody gives a fuck if you say it or not. Let's just be clear about that. Right? Nobody gives a fuck what I say. Just the way it is, folks. It's a big world out there. Nobody cares. Right. But let's say you're dealing, you do come up to a difficult time in life. Let's say you do approach a crossroads. Let's say you do approach something that's uh, challenging the foundations or the cage that you've built for yourself or the one that you've accepted in your life via the conditioned and pattern thoughts that 
that you wish to deal with that are most congruent with the way you want to live. <clears throat> we can always talk about what we don't like. What happens when we start talking about the 10 things we do like? See, there's an awful lot of energy that we can tap into with uh, anger and hate and mutual frustration and, and just we're all victims in this together. Because that's at the end of the day, that's when you carry it out to its furthest logical extreme, that's what it sounds like. We're all victims in this together. Talk about a bipolar fucking bunch of nonsense. We're victims, but we're together. <laughs> Imagine if you started your conversation talking about the 10 things you find positive. So there's, there are times when People are alone and they wake up by themselves and they have to deal with the pain that goes on and that, that, they, that they've experienced in life and they get through it. We always get through it. When how much it hurts, we always get through it. Somehow, some way, our heart keeps beating, our brain keeps thinking, blood keeps flowing. Through the tears, when we put one foot in front of the other, we move forward. And we can do that by that son of a bitch or that, that fucking bitch blah, just bitching about people. And everybody's been a victim of that. Everybody's been hurt or tripped over or lied to or deceived. And they've given up or they've let go or they have tried to put on the hardest thing they can and they want to walk away from it. And they can associate with other people because the other people want to bitch about it too. <sighs> Excuse me. What's your world look like like that? What does your world look like like that? We are always looking for a reason to be unhappy. Always waiting for the other shoe to drop. What's your world going to be like as you talk about negative things all the time? You have a reason to be sad always, don't you? You have a reason to be angry at all times, don't you? You have a, a, a really hot fuel source to use, don't you? But when you talk with a friend, path to a friend's house, though it be covered with brambles, is the easiest trip you'll ever make. Because you're going to talk about the things that make you happy. And in those moments when we find that connection with another individual, where we can talk about the positive things that help us rise up and stand up and hold, stick our chest out, hold our head up high and figure out that we love each other. Instead of dealing with the coal of anger and hatred and frustration and negative things, for just a moment, just a drop, look at the majority of the interactions you have with people. What are they? Are they positive or are they negative? Are they laced with negative ideas? Or are they continually a positive idea? Start keeping track of it. And when you find yourself dipping into that <coughs> negative, I don't like this, I don't like that, start finding the things you do like. And then see how your words change because once those words change, and you begin to make a small connection with someone, not a dramatic, I'm gonna fall in love kind of thing, but uh, this is a good person and I, this, I feel good talking to them. I've enjoyed my conversation with them. You're tapping into literally a nuclear fuel source called love. And it's an amazingly abundant resource that we all too often deny ourselves the privilege of enjoying because we'd rather be angry. It's familiar, we know it. There's a risk involved in love, we always think. The risk is not out there. The risk is always in here because once we get that little bitty drop, it's very powerful, very intoxicating. And we just know because of our negative thoughts that it's gonna be fucked up somehow. 
going to be shit on. It's bullshit. It's a lie. It's wrong. It's no good. Well, hell yeah, it's going to be that way if that's what you think about it. But let's find 10 positive things about it and see how long it lasts and see how it can be built upon and see what can be done with it and then see how your life changes. Imagine if you could do that with everyone you wanted to deal with. Imagine if you had the strength of your own mind, possession of your own thought process, because it those are your thoughts. It is your brain. You're the one that thinks them. If you can't change them, nobody can. Start thinking about the positive things that are happening. And then you begin to find yourself having a readily available access to a very, very, very powerful attribute of life itself, the ability to love. Think of the joy that grandparents feel when they see their grandchildren when they're young and happy. Everything a child sees is something new and wonderful and learning and amazing. We're the ones that beat that beauty out of them. Accept the responsibility for that. We're the ones that do that. We're the ones that do that because we would rather be brutally honest and make shitty fucking comments and just generally deny them that. And then they become shitty people themselves because that's who we are. Always going to find the negative on it. Always going to find the half truth that most suits our ability to have a negative thought process. Stop it. You want to see the effect of changing your thoughts, changes your reality. Start finding 10 positive things about every interaction you have. And see if your world doesn't change. See if pathways don't open up for you as if by magic. Take my word for it. Just try it. See if you can become aware of it. First off, know yourself and seek self-improvement. The first principle of military leadership, the first principle of any kind of leadership. I don't give a fuck what book you've read on leadership. It's going to tell you, you got to know yourself. And you got to seek self-improvement. It's no different with faith. It's no different with spirituality. Know yourself and seek self-improvement. Did you do better today than you did yesterday? Hey, you're making success. Find 10 positive things and see how well that changes everything about what you do. <clears throat> if we look at Forsetti, we look at Balder, in whose room the fewest baleful runes reside. Do you think he has a negative outlook on anything? Probably not. And his result, his thought process and that and the love that he shared with Nana gave us a judge that put to sleep all suits in the most equitable manner. So there is a foundation, a little cornerstone for our society itself. The rule of law. And it was inspired by love. Start having conditioning your thought process to be positive and pay attention. And you, then you will find out the degree to which your words change the outcome of your life. That's the great secret of all of it. That's the great secret of everything we do. How can this faith help me change my mind from the pattern that it's been in to a new pattern that I want to enjoy life? That's the secret to it all. You heard it here first. 